Hello students, today we are going to discuss about Cloudonomics. So if you are understanding the cloud computing concepts, it is very important to understand the economics of the cloud, means how costly or how cheaper are the cloud services that you are going to provide to the consumers. So this topic is very important to understand and I have tried my level best to improvise the things in a brief manner so that you could have the general idea about what exactly is this cloudonomics. So let's uh, start our discussion on the cloudonomics topic. So what is cloudonomics? As I said earlier, it is cloud plus economics, economics of the cloud computing, which basically deals with the knowledge of the principles behind providing the services, the cost being involved, within providing the services as well as the benefit of using the cloud solutions. So any organization which want to conduct its business through the cloud computing, so it becomes very important for them to understand the economics of the cloud computing. Just because they want to set up their IT budgets, they want to provide the security aspects within their infrastructure. So normally there is nothing like any hard and fast rule to understand the cloudonomics, but you should only uh, know about the kind of infrastructure that you are going to establish, the need and the management of that infrastructure, the manpower being required, the research and development facilities being available, and the security aspects that you are going to provide within your infrastructure and various support services that are needed. So in a nutshell, it says that the economics of the cloud basically deals with the kind of service as well as the infrastructure that you are going to provide to your consumers. Now here is the concept of total cost of ownership which plays a vital role while understanding the, the uh, concept of the economics. So here is the total cost of ownership, which says that the TCO is equals to acquisition cost as well as the operational cost. Now, first of all, let's understand what is the acquisition cost. Acquisition cost is the cost of acquiring any particular resource being it a physical server or any kind of resource which is part of your IT data center. So here I'm taking the example of the physical servers only. So the acquisition cost of physical server is the cost of purchasing that particular physical server. Now what could be the operational cost of that physical server? The cost of um, establishing or installation of the physical uh, servers as well as their maintenance cost, as well as the manpower that has been deployed, as well as the facilities that you are providing so that the physical server will uh, run well, uh, such as the ventilation facility, the cooling facility, the power facility, the network facility, all these things will cover under the operational cost. So the total, total cost of ownership deals with the acquisition as well as the operational cost of that particular commodity that you are establishing within your data center. Now here is the next slide, which is very important to understand, which says that OPEX is the new CAPEX. So let's first of all understand what is OPEX and what is CAPEX. OPEX here is the operational expenditure and CAPEX is the capital expenditure. So if you uh, remember the concept of the traditional data centers, the traditional data centers majorly been uh, focusing more on uh, investing more on the capital expenditure, capital infrastructure, like uh, purchasing the servers, establishing the data center facilities, then buying the latest technology and as well as the platforms but they were having less focus on the how well you are deploying your application how well it is working uh, that particular application so within the 
today's concept of the cloud computing model where we are working with the modernized software defined data centers the 80 percent of the time is focused on the operational expenditure on managing the application its uh, running facility its deployment facility uh, and how well that particular application is responding to the clients and only the 20 percent focus is given to the uh, the data center the core technologies and the server and all the operating system facilities so this is the ideal distribution of the time and resources that is being used by the modern data centers now next is the very important aspect which is the laws of the cloudonomics the laws of the cloudonomics were basically been uh, given by the joe Wenman. Uh, it is provided in the 2008. So even till today, these laws are very important to understand the cloudonomics of the cloud computing. So let's start discussing these 10 laws one by one in a brief manner. So here is the very first law which says utility services cost less even though they cost more. So please try to understand the law what it depicts the answer is lying in itself only so it says that utility services what are the utility services the services that you are using only for the certain period of time so those services would be charging you more even though you feel that the entire cost of purchasing that utility is actually the lesser it says that utility services are charging you for the premium of the services for the time only that you are using it and they these would not be charged within the cloud computing when you don't want to use them so same is the concept here utility services cost less even though they cost more to us same is the second law which says that on demand trumps forecasting so here please uh, recall that what is on demand and what is forecasting facility forecasting here means any service or any resource which has been provided to you all the time right even when you don't require it so what is on demand on demand is a kind of facilitation when you want the service only then you will get it when you don't want it you will release the service so on demand is always considered better than forecasting the services so this is what the second law says then there comes the third laws which says the peak of the sum is never greater than the sum of the peaks so here are the two points to understand here the peak of the sum and the sum of the peaks so i have tried to uh, make this point understood uh, well through the example so let's consider one example that uh, we are using in day-to-day -day life we all use the internet facility in our smart gadgets so let's suppose the daily uses quota for your uh, uh, internet facility which has been given to you by the service provider is the 2 gb so what is the sum of peaks here sum of peak is the that 2 gb quota that has been given to you on day-to-day -day basis so if you want to calculate the sum of peak for weekly basis then it is said that for the seven days if you are going to use 2 gb per day then total 14 gb will be given to you that is the sum of the peak now what is the peak of the sum peak of the sum says even if the quota granted to us is 2 gb we are not fully utilizing that 2 gb on daily basis so what is the peak of the sum here it is saying that only the time and only the uh, utilization that we are having for that internet resource means let's suppose for the first day on the monday i am utilizing only the 1 gb and the next day it is 1.5 then similarly next day it is 2 and for the entire seven days i use the maximum sum of the 8 gb here so the peak for the monday was 1 gb for the tuesday was 1.5 gb and similarly for the other days so when i sum these peaks so i got 8 gb so it is more relevant to us so it is saying now go to the law the peak of the sum is never greater than the sum of the 
speaks. So this is what the law depicts in itself. The next law is the aggregate demand is smoother than the individual. So what is the aggregate demand here? And what is the individual demand? So here this uh, law was provided to us in context of how we are using the resources which are been provided to us in the cloud services. So normally we all know that cloud computing is a majorly focus, focusing on providing the multi-tenancy model means one resource will be shared by the multiple tenants. So this is bringing the aggregate demand. So aggregate demand is always smoother than the individual demand. It's always better that one resource being used by only one single individual rather than using it by the more the more people. So it has always been considered better if number of people can use one single resource for optimizing the services. So aggregate demand is smoother than the individual. The next law, which is the fifth one, is the similar in, in context to the fourth law, which says average unit costs are reduced by distributing the fixed costs over the more units of output. So it simply says that when we are distributing our fixed costs over number of units, so then the average unit cost can easily be reduced. So try to understand the meaning of this law. It says that cloud vendors have a size that allows them to purchase resources at the significant reduced prices. You can uh, purchase the uh, resources from the cloud service providers at the reduced prices because they are distributing those uh, single resources to the multiple people at the same time. Then the next law is security in numbers is the most important factor in the result of a combat. So severity in the numbers. When you are providing the things at the multiple places or you are, when you are dispersing the uh, space of the cloud data center, then what will happen? It is becomes very tedious task for the intruders to attack your systems because they don't know exactly where, where that particular component, where the, uh, the loophole actually has been residing. So here is uh, the thing they are saying that when we are providing uh, the people with the large cloud size, then the small systems, so it becomes always very, uh, uh, you can say tiresome task for the negative people uh, that to, provide the DD kind, DDoS kind of attacks as well as to repel the bottlenecks. Then is the seventh law which says the space time is continuum. Again, whenever uh, you will provide the dispersed kind of services to the user, so any business can take the advantage of these, these services by quickly responding to the services, right? So it will help them to boost their businesses in a better way. So space time is continuum because whenever the space is more, so we can provide the facility of multiple processes to the real time businesses. So means the response time becomes the quicker then. The law, again, the next law is the dispersion is the inverse, inverse square of latency. So it is very clear that if you are dispersing your services to the greater level, then the chances of latencies are becoming the lesser there. So if your cloud services are more dispersed, then the latency charges are becoming more, chances of latencies are becoming the lesser. So the next law is uh, in context of the uh, taking the backups as well as the replicas at multiple places within the globe. It says that don't pull all your eggs in one basket don't place the entire of your data at a single place, right? Rather, disperse it at the multiple locations, being it multiple zones or at the multiple regions, depending upon the sensitivity of your data. It will help us to provide the, uh, the availability of the services in a better way. So here is the last law, which says that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So it is again as per the Newton's law too. So it says that whenever you are restricting your services at the 
one single place only then the chances of exploring your business will become the less you will not be able to explore it at the greater level so always provide the facility uh, of your business so that it should be explored at the uh, higher levels so it says that private data centers try to be tend to be located in the places where the company or the unit was founded or acquired so cloud providers can site their data centers in what they called as greenfield sites so this, this is what the remedy that they have provided rather than placing the data at the one single place just disperse it and when you are dispersing it then keep in mind that those sites where you are establishing the new data centers those should be the greenfield sites so greenfield sites are basically the environmental friendly sites where the locations that are on a network bandwidth have a cheap access to the power and the cooling facilities thank you so much for watching the cloudonomics uh, tutorial today have a nice day